Mr. Stiller. Albie Mayer. The pleasure to make your acquaintance face to face. Oh, Mr. Mayer, how do you do? I'm a little late. Generally, I'm a strictly on-time person when it comes to business. But I got started sightseeing, I got carried away, and before I know it, here I am late for what's my most important meeting of the whole trip. <laughs> hey, this is some city you got here. This is your first visit to Barry, Mr. Mayor. Right, first time. I like it. It's big, clean. I like big, clean places. Big, clean places and big, clean people. Except in women. And women clean, but not so big, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, Mr. Stiller, like I told you over the telephone, but now I'm going to tell you again, face to face, which is the best way for a rave compliment. This picture I've seen of yours is a great motion picture. That is very kind to say. Kind? Nothing. It's a fact. If a fact was a lie, I wouldn't be so kind, believe me, if you know what I mean. You are certainly the best sweet director going, no competition. I am finished, Mr. Meyer. You finished with what? No, Mr. Meyer, finish from Finland. Mr. Stiller is born in Finland. That's the girl. The girl in the picture. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I recognized her. Uh, Greta, this is Mr. Louis B. Mayer of the Metro and Goldwyn and Mayer. Miss Carbo. It's a pleasure. You were very nice in the picture. Very nice. Just telling Maurice what a great picture he's got there. Mauritz. What is it? My name is Mauritz. Mauritz? Mauritz, right. <laughs> it's close enough. In America, it would be Maurice. It's the same thing. Irving is gonna love your picture too, Maurice. Irving Thalberg, my partner. Irving, they call him the Wonder Boy. He's a smart cookie. Would you like a drink, Mr. Meyer? No, I never drink during business hours. So, Maurice, what do you say? Did you think it over? What I said on the telephone? Oh, this is a serious... Uh, Greta, have you done the... Proposal. A serious proposal. Oh, I didn't come here all the way from the USA, Maurice, to make jokes. I'm here to offer you a very nice proposal. I'm here to talk turkey. You wouldn't be homesick. Oh, believe me, there are more foreigners in Hollywood now than you can shake a stick at. You by any chance know Victor Seastrom? He's also a Swede. Yeah, I know Victor. You see what I mean? Victor Seastrom. Sure, he directed our very first MGM movie. He who gets slapped. Lon Chaney, John Gilbert, Norma Shearer. Psh, terrific picture. Eric von Stroheim, we got him. He's a fabulous success over there. And he's from right here in Germany. Von Stroheim is Austrian. Austrian, German, whatever. All these people are doing great in the USA. I myself was born in Russia. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 I don't talk the language. That was Russian, huh? No, I've been in America since I was three years old. I don't talk nothing but only English. And look at me now. They don't call America the land of opportunity for nothing, believe me. So, what do you say, Maurice? I could have a contract in your hand by this time tomorrow. In agreement we make, it must also be Greta. Who? Oh? Miss Carbo. Oh. Oh, uh, this would be required. Uh, Maurice, uh, also, what is exactly also? A contract for Miss Carbo. No Greta, no Maurice, huh? Maurice. <laughs> I understand completely. Far be it for me to break up a close relationship. I'm positive we can work out something for the girl. In a manner of speaking, this is not the first time that I heard of an arrangement like that. Okay, tomorrow, we'll work out the details of the contract. The small print. I'll even let you read it. And Miss Garbo's contract. We'll work it out, Maurice, we'll work it out. But, uh, she should definitely lose some weight before she comes over. She's a little on the plump side for American movies. Hmm. I'll count on you to take care of that. One thing you can be sure, Maurice, with me, you do your job right, you got a job for life. That's the way I am. Ask anybody.
Mm. He doesn't want me. Leave it. He said nothing about my performance in the film. Very nice, nothing. Do you trust a person like that, or do you trust Steeler? Yeah. Steeler has selected to go to America, and he will take with him his Gareta. Who can say to him no? He talks very much. A lot. And very fast. And very rich. Plenty of money for the making of films for you. Moolah. Moolah. Money. When someone is very rich, Americans say, plenty moolah. This is what they teach you in your English lesson. Not all the English is in the books. I learn a little extra. I will be a success. I will be a great actress, no matter what I must do to be that. It is everything I want. And someday, I have plenty moolah. You bet. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Thalbert. Good morning, Stuart. Yeah. This will never do, I'm sorry. Mr. Munsterheim wanted 12 of these. Are you decent? Although after last night, how could I ask such a question? <laughs> oh, look who's talking. Irving Thalberg, the boy wonder. <laughs> if the MGM stockholders had only seen you last night. Shh. I was the picture of decorum throughout the entire evening. Oh, how much can you even remember? You were practically unconscious when you left my house this morning, Irving. Jack. You. I forgot as much as I could, but what I remember, I don't like. You lead too sheltered a life, Irving, but under my expert guidance, you're coming along. Coming under your along. Expert guidance, I am a wreck. <laughs> Here, give these to your mother. Or a scrapbook. Who's this? I can't make out the face. Wait a minute, is this the girl who. Let me see that one. Mm hmm, that's the girl who. <laughs> I'm not so bad behind the camera either, am I? You want an honest opinion? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think maybe it's time you stopped all this catting around and started thinking about settling down a little bit. Ah, settling down. Settling down, hmm? I've already settled down twice. Do you remember? Do you know how much alimony I'm paying out? <laughs> I fainted the first time you told me. Please don't repeat the figure. Two marriages is enough. Three strikes and you're out. Never again. Never. I'm not talking about getting married necessarily. I mean, you could start off easy. Stay with one girl for a whole week, perhaps. Personally, I don't see how you keep track of them in your own head. I will bet you ten dollars that you can't tell me the name of the girl I saw you with at the Trocadero the night before last. You're a menace. I'll tell you something else. Yeah? It's starting to show. Even through all that makeup. Jack, you don't look so good. Well, the way von Stroheim is lighting this picture, no one will notice. Are you seeing dailies? Yes, of course I'm seeing dailies, and I absolutely agree with you. I'm talking to Vonnie this afternoon. No one does not talk to von Stroheim. One screams at him, screams at him. <laughs> Jack, I do not scream at anybody. That's LB's department. Don't I know that? <laughs> you know, things have been so blissfully peaceful around here since he's been away. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, why don't you two just try to get together a little bit? I mean, do you believe in reincarnation? Because I do. Because I know that Attila the Hun has come back in a very clever disguise, but Louis is not fooling me! <laughs> We're ready on the set, Mr. Gilbert. All right! Time to go to work. Uh, work? You call this work, Irving? Let me tell you something quite honestly. I'm not sure how good an idea this picture was. No, 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 because the Merry Widow is an operetta. How can you have an operetta without the music? It doesn't make sense to me. Do you know what we really need to do is to hear movies. Work on it, boy wonder. John Gilbert singing Franz Leha. That I would like to hear. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Oh, time is money. Get to work, will you, please? I'm going to Maxine's, where fun and frolic beams. With all the girls I flatter, I laugh, <laughs> I sing, I flatter. Oh, oh. Yo, thank you. 
car has arrived from MGM. I'm not ready. We will be late. It will be all right. But I want everything to be perfect. So perfect. I want them to like me. I want to be irresistible. Then they will give me the chance to show them what I can be. It will be all right. You calm yourself. How can I calm myself on such a day? Try. Too much eyes, darling. Too much? Am I thin enough for them now, do you think? For them, yeah, I think. But you don't like it. You don't like me this way. You're right. I look like a starved mouse, and I feel like a starved mouse. When we go back home again, I will eat again. I will eat, and I will eat, and I will eat. No more Greta Gustafsson. No more Greta Garbo. Greta Balloon, they will call me. Oh, my, I'm getting hysterical. <laughs> oh, there is nothing to fear. Now I will be with you. Always, my Always be with me. Promise me. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> I liked that picture. Some very original and stylish work on your part, Mrs. Tiller. Uh, I was not aware that you had seen the film. Oh, yes. Mr. Mayor brought back a print for me to look at. Oh, yes. I liked it. I don't always see eye to eye with Mr. Mayor, but this time he was right on the money. I beg your pardon. Um, it was a smart thing he did bringing you over here. Yes. In America, that's a compliment. You're welcome. Ah, not correct. Thank you. You are welcome. My English is um, sometimes I am confusing. No, 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 no. I am confusing. You are confused. Please. I am. Well, no. Forget it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. Uh, in the meantime, I will talk slower, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay? Okay. Okay. Now, as for you, Greta, may I call you Greta? Oh, yes. I thought your performance was lovely. Really lovely. It was a little tough, for, uh, a little um, difficult for me to follow what was going on because I can't read the Swedish titles, of course. <laughs> but whatever was going on, you made it go on quite beautifully. This is nice for you to say. We're going to find you something, Greta. Soon, the right thing will come along. I am hopeful. I don't know of any particular script that's floating around the studio right now, but uh, it'll come along, I'm sure. With my... my... Luchanan. Approval. Appro with my approval. Sir? With my approval, Gareta's work must be careful chosen. Only what I think is best for her. Mr. Mayor and I will select something that'll be just right for Greta. I am hopeful. Okay. <laughs> what is she, a fairy princess or something? Approval. Where does he think he is, Sweden? Where does it say approval in that contract? I'll tell you where. No place. That's where. Not even in the small print which I wrote myself. Also, I read it, which is more than that Swede Gonov did. And you didn't tell him where to get off. I'll tell him where to get off. Oh, your blood pressure. What, my blood pressure? You're the one with the blood pressure, Mr. Boy Wonder. Are they still on the lot? I'll tell them before they get off the lot. Yes, yes, they're still on the lot. I told Seastrom to take them on a tour, show them around. Listen, I think it would be Seastrom! Seastrom, another Swedish director. <laughs> That's all I need. If you can imagine what the two of them are cooking up together out there, and nobody can understand a cockamamie word they're talking. Louis, listen to me. I think if I handle this particular situation myself, it would be better. Why you? Because I have the feeling it could get a little bit delicate. What we gotta do is fix him up. What? A girl will fix him up with something nice. Get his mind off that Swedish cupcake. <laughs> from my personal observation so far, I don't think that's the answer. Yeah. Tell me something. From your personal observation, did she lose any weight? But what is this complex you have with weight? One, she looks swell. Too. She didn't look so bad in that movie, either. 
Three? I three? Don't think... Three, the only complex I got is about foreigners who come over here and tell me who's gonna be in my movies and who ain't. Our movies, Louis. Our movies. You did not write my small print. This is a very big business here. Business is for the head, not so good for the heart. You listen, always for many years it is so. Victor giving advice to Maritz. Well, from now on, I'd let Thalberg give you the advice. Then you feel like the papa. So young he is, a boy. Yeah, but his health is not too good. Very delicate, rheumatic character. Uh, in English? Rheumatic heart. Uh, but such tremendous energy. Mayer and Thalberg, in their very first year of MGM, they make 26 films. This year, only the second, they say closer to 46. Oh, too many, too quickly. Not in America. You will have to move so much faster than the usual pace of your work. Uh, no, I work as I work. It is America that is different, not I. Oh, but every here, not a von Stroheim. No, a stiller. Come, we go watch the latest duo in MGM's crowd. This is who? Jan Gilbert. Oh, I am not in the mood for American film stars. You go and look at this crown jewel, and I will go and walk some more in the snow. It reminds me of home. <laughs> Come. Good morning, Mr. Seastrom. Tony. How are you? We heard of him before we come over. Or oh, the big parade, not yet released in Europe. But when it is, I think, a sensational success like here. Gilbert, a star overnight, as they say in America. God sent Irving Talberg's gift to American womanhood. I directed him last year in MGM's very first film. That was he who gets slapped. Yes, Gilbert says, he who gets slapped is much better off than him who gets punched in the mouth. Or he who gets slapped deserves it for making such an indecent proposal. It can be very naughty. My, My lips feel like they're cracking. They're so dry, King. I'm supposed to be, darling. You're dying. Of what, chap lips? When it comes time to work, he does his job well. Very serious. This is going to be a very tight close-up, kiddies. Yeah. So, Jack, you can stay in quite close and give her your lines. I'll give her anything she wants. That's what you think. Lillian Gish. Director is King Vidor. All right, let's make it. And that, of course, is Jack Gilbert, the most beautiful one. Try to die quick. Well, you hunt, it's almost lunchtime. I'm starving. Quiet! Music, please. Now, Jack. Mimi, my love. You've come back. You've come back. I'm here, Mimi. Oh, you mustn't cry. You're going to be strong. Your pretty cheeks will be rosy again. Open your eyes now, Lillian. See if you can catch the key light. Perfect. All right, now. Get ready to die. Jack, wait and see. You'll be the loveliest lady in all of Paris. Not yet, Lillian. Please, a success. And all because of you. And there is yet another friend, one who will sing when he sees you. Now, Jack, rushes out of the room, and you die. Miss Garber, Mr. Gilbert. It's always a pleasure to see a new face. Are you the latest addition to Hollywood's Swedish colony? I think so. Excuse me. Flatter him, darling. He thrives on it. Oh, don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> Do, um... Do I have to call you Miss Garbo? I'll tell you what, I'll show you my first name if you show me yours, you see? I know yours. Mine is Greta. Greta? Hmm? It's funny, I knew a Greta once. Where was that? Oh, who can remember? Hmm. Poor Greta. Poor Greta number one. Greta number two, I'll never forget. Are you an actress? Yes. Oh, you don't sound very sure. Well, maybe someday I sound more sure. No, you must be more confident than that. There are no maybes in this business. There are yeses, there are noes. Either one may be an out and out lie. But there are no maybes. I'm sorry. Let's get out of here. You, me, together. Out. Out where? Anywhere. 
and go for a drive. Would you like to go for a drive? We can go up to Monterey. We could have a nice swim while the moon goes down. Have some breakfast. Do you know, I know a wonderful restaurant that specializes in breakfast after moonlight swims. Have you ever been to Monterey? I don't think so. Oh, nothing could be better than to be with Swedish Greta in the morning. Uh, I'll settle for a quiet talk. my brain a little from too much English. Too much all at once. Uh, so many friends, Victor. In the attic, all my enemies. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we cannot have too many of them. Moritz, there's something that I must talk with you about. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Mayor asked me to his office. He is unhappy, he says to me, about the circumstances of you and Greta. Circumstances? On Sagdiki Herten. Old. Mayor says maybe better this suggestion comes from me to you because we are friends. You see, there are certain matters which are not looked upon the same way in America as they are in Europe. For example. Victor, one American saying I have learned good. Go to the place. Point. Go to the point. <laughs> Mayor and Torbeck. They do not think it prudent that you and Greta live together. You're not serious. Try to understand, in America, for a man and woman to live together and be unmarried, it is a matter for ugly gossip. In the film industry, it is an outright scandal. You are very important to them. If I am so important to them, why do I not yet have a film to direct? They are fast to sign contracts, but not so fast to put one to work. Oh, yeah. Do what they want. They only require that you live apart. So simple. Beyond that, your lives are your own. They cannot tell me to live my life the way they think I should. Do not throw aside the great opportunity you have here. If not for yourself, think of Greta. But I'll tell you something very private. When, well, in my secret heart of hearts, I always had wished I'd become a Shakespearean actor. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or just to have another drink and chuck the whole thing. Are we going to have drinks this week? Dinner? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, there you are again. Maybe. I don't know. No, you have to say yes or you have to say no. And I won't take no for an answer. How do you say yes in Sweden? Yeah. Good. Tomorrow night be okay? It was a trick on me. No. <laughs> you are very amusing. <laughs> well, I am partly that, yes. But I'm also other things. Much more interesting. So say you'll have dinner with me. No tricks. It would not be possible. Are you already spoken for? I'm sorry? Well, do you have one particular gentleman friend to whom you are exclusively devoted? I have Moya. Ah, Moya. See, now we're getting somewhere. Who's Moya? Stiller. Maurits Stiller. 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 I met him tonight. Stiller. You and Stiller? I am his protégé. <sighs> protégé. Oh, you are... You know that, don't you? How could I? One must be serious for a broken heart. But you're not serious. <laughs> of course not. You must have many girls who, uh, how do you say it, uh, drop for you. I beg your pardon. Oh, oh that is not correct. Oh, fall for you. <laughs> many girls, yes.
Yes, sir. Then it's more than here. Yeah. Santa Monica will be good for you. The air from the sea is good for the skin. I don't care about my skin. Not so serious. If it's a small amusement. I see no amusement in this, Moya. Better to try. I said try, not cry. Where is your English? I don't want to be alone. I think it is good for you. It is time for that, maybe. Why do you let them think something that is not true? Not now. Why don't you tell them? Because they would not believe it. And because what we are is between us. For no one else. And maybe it flatters me that they should believe as they do. Why should you be flattered about me, Moya? You could have anyone, any woman. There is only one of you, my darling. There will never be another. Come, come. You should not let me go so easy. Read it as soon as you can. I think you're going to like this one, Greta. We all believe that it's just the right vehicle to introduce you to the American public. It's based on a novel by Vincent Blasco Ibanez. I'm sure you've heard of him. He was the writer of The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a tremendous hit picture. <laughs> See, when you got a winner, you stick with him. We are co-starring you with Ricardo Cortez. Do you know Ricardo by chance? No, he's Spanish. <laughs> sure, Spanish from Brooklyn, USA. <laughs> he called himself after a cigar. I'm very happy at last to have a film. I begin to think I will never make a film in America. I just saw your uh, second test, Miss Garbo. It was brilliant. Because of Maritz, Mr. Bell. Um, Manta will be directing you in the torrent, Greta. Mr. Bell? Well, I think you can call him Manta. I I'd like you to be friends. But I thought... M I thought Moya... Stiller will not be directing this picture. Not this one, Greta. Look, Greta, better you make your first American movie with an experienced American director, like Manta here. Better for you, better for Stella. And better for you. That, sweetheart, goes without saying. Stella will not be pleased. He will be very unhappy. I am unhappy. Greta, you take care of the acting. We'll take care of the business. Greta, believe me, we are going to find the right project for Stilla. We don't want him to be unhappy. We certainly don't want you to be unhappy. We're going to do everything we can for you. We want you to trust us. Right. If you can't trust us, who can you trust? Believe me. I went out with Tommy last night. I think sure. I don't know what to Where's the fire? Oh, how quickly they forget. Jack Gilbert, ring a bell? I'm sorry, I know who you are, of uh -huh. course. I am thinking. A what? Your best friend's funeral? Yeah, well, look at that. down the mouth, kid. Please, I do not understand. I do not. Please. I'm sorry. Really, forgive me. I'm sorry, okay? Why do they do such a thing? First they say Moy does brilliant work on my screen test. Then they say, no, he's not the one to direct my movie. Well, ours is not to reason why. But I know all about them. Tell me about you. And then the mayor sees just a bailing, and then I am here. That is my whole story. Well, that is a very short story. But that's probably because you're quite young. Today I feel so old. Yes. <laughs> Hollywood can do that to you some days. You're much younger than, uh, Stiller. Yes. Huh. Is that a very serious situation? Serious? Uh, important. Oh, yes, it is completely important to me. Moya has done everything for me. Well, what about fun? Fun? 
Yeah, I've seen him around a lot. He doesn't look like he'd be a hell of a lot of fun for a girl like you. Work is more important than fun. <sighs> Not to you, I know. I hear the stories. <laughs> well, half of them aren't true. Of course, the other half aren't quite true enough, so it sort of balances itself out. You know, you don't smile enough. You know, you need somebody in your life who's going to make you smile. Are you in love with Stiller? I must go now. Oh, no, listen, I thought we might have lunch together. Um, you look hungry. In fact, you look uh, altogether too skinny. You should put on some weight. <laughs> well, why are you laughing? Never mind. Lunch? No. no. Dinner? Without you, I will be terrible. But you will not be without me. In the day, in front of the camera, you will belong to Mr. Montebel. But I will be there to watch, to see, discreetly, of course. This is not the way we thought it would be. Not like home. It is like they own us, Moya. Do you want to go home? Home? Would you think to go home? Not I, my dear. You mean if I wanted to go home, you would not go with me? To go home would be to say that they know best. To go home would be to say that I am not good enough for them. No. How absurd. No. I must only be um, patient. I will try to be that. So will I. Of course you will. So then, you must let yourself be owned. But only for a small time, I think. And if you work very, very hard, if you be the best you can be, then the day will come when no one will own you. This I truly believe. About a half hour? It'll seem like days, my love. Want to see me, Albie? Want to, no. But I got no choice. What do you want? I want to tell you, a lot of people are wondering what a man like me is doing paying a fortune of a salary to a man like you. What the hell are you raving about? A man who maybe still hasn't heard of the Volstead Act. An official act of the United States government. Prohibition, it's called. Am I ringing a bell? Are you talking about last night? Is that, is that what you're talking about? I am talking about John Gilbert, the movie star. Picked up by the Beverly Hills cops, driving in a dangerous manner 60 miles along Sunset Boulevard at 3 o'clock in the morning, drunk as a skunk, with a fuzzy <laughs> who keeps throwing her clothes out the window, one by one. So that by the time the cops catch up, she's naked as a jaybird right there in the front seat. Am I ringing a bell? Oh, cool off, will you, LB? Irving took care of that. Irving took care of that. So, once in a while, we're able to keep this stuff out of the papers. You know, personally, I think the American public gets a big kick out of my carefree, flamboyant, off-screen life. I don't care what you think. I'll tell you what I think. I think you better start acting in a decent, respectable, upstanding manner. That don't disgrace me and the studio and everything it stands for. Which is films for the American family. Personally, I think you should have stayed in the junk business. With people like you, I'm still in the junk business. You lay a hand, I'll have the cops on you. I'll sue you for every cent you got. I gotta be on stage nine in 20 minutes. Lights. Over here, over here. Lights, You lost your concentration at that moment, and Cortez turned you to him. I could see that happening. So it was all gone. The color, the, the texture that you must get from that scene. It's a terrible written scene. So you must rely on yourself, not on the stupid words. 
Hello. How's it going? All right. Uh, but only two weeks shooting so far. Hmm. Hello. I'm hearing very good things about you. Oh, that's nice. Would you mind terribly if I came down one afternoon and watched some of your shooting? That would be all right. <laughs> the scene is not completely hopeless. I think one more take, then you will have what is necessary for that moment. <laughs> Greta, are you listening? Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayer's here. Send him in. What do we got on the torrent? Didn't you read those reviews I sent you? Reviews? I'm not interested. Critics don't buy tickets. They get in for free. No, besides, you're going out of the noodles about her. What have we got? Well, on the basis of the preview cards, the first week's grosses and the reaction from the New York office, I'd say we got something hot. Didn't I tell you I spotted Greta's potential the minute I laid eyes? The thing now is to move fast and put her in another picture as soon as possible. Right. What do we got? What about the temptress? What do you think? We team her up with Moreno. It's another Spanish type, and right after Cortez. We don't want to get her into any bad habits. <laughs> and frankly, uh, I haven't got any positive objections. But what about a director? Well, I think in that area, I sort of made her a promise about Stiller. Well, do you think we should take a chance? I think it's about time he started earning his salary. I got no positive objections. <laughs> last it, last it, last it, last it, but we do it together this time. I knew it would happen. Oh, boy, I'm so happy now. Yeah, but another story by Blasco Ibanez. Well, like Mayor says, when you got a winner, stick to him. <laughs> now we really show them, won't we, Moye? Uh, but will we show them? How great you are. A stealer is the best of all the best. Of course. And what of his leading <laughs> actress? I also show them I ain't so bad either. You talk them out for, kiddo. <laughs> ah, actor. You are actor. You will act. I am the director. Me? I will direct. You can direct traffic. The camera is mine. You do not tell me what to do. Move oh, my camera. I'll tell you what you can do Please. with the camera. Antonio, Forgive me, darling. Oh, yeah. You have my heartfelt apologies. You I adore, but this, this madman, this I cannot tolerate. Idiot! I'm sorry, Maurit. I really am. But I have no choice now. Today was the third time that I've had to go down to that set and be a referee. I'm not a referee. I'm a producer. And you are already seven days behind schedule on this picture. But this is not my fault altogether. No, not altogether, I know. But apart from your problems with Moreno, I have to say this, Maritz. Your methods of working are just too damn slow. It's costing us a fortune. We can't afford it. I've had to replace you on this picture. Fred Niblo is taking over. There is money in dealer's art, Maritz. I'm as interested in art as you are but not if it costs too much. Look, oh, these are from New York, from Skank. Re the Temptress. Huh? No walkouts, Garbo steals it. Don't tell Moreno. <laughs> <laughs> Open, soft, but personally positive, will build mainly due to GG. What's wait, next? Wait, 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 mainly due to what? Garbo. Oh. What's next? See if you can find her a manly man to play opposite her. She is one terrific tootsie. <laughs> Regards, Nick. For the first time, I agree with him. Yes. Well, I had the answer before he even asked the question. Put the terrific tootsie opposite John Gilbert in Flesh and the Devil. Okay, that's fine with the art. Fair enough? Okay. Good to go, Bo. I prefer doing a major scene on the first day of shooting. I think you'll both agree the boudoir scene qualifies. If you shoot an important scene on the first day, it breaks the ice and cuts through the first day jitters. Oh, well, I never get first day jitters, Clarence. Mm. <laughs> would you like to run through it again, or uh, would you care to go for a shot? Well, I'd prefer to shoot it, Clarence, if that's all right with you. Of course. 
See, I don't know about you, but all of this pretend rehearsal kissing has a tendency to get me down after a while. It makes me very irritated. Then, no more pretends. Second team, step out, please. Thank you. Take. Now hold it down, please. This is a take, everybody. I'm nervous. Why am I so nervous? I don't know. I'm never nervous. <laughs> Ready, Jack? Camera? Music? And action. One more day, my darling. How can I let you go? Very soon, my service will expire. And then we can be together forever. Rings? So you won't forget me? Forget you? Never. As long as I live, or even if I die. This afternoon was not movie make-believe, and you admit that. I admit. But then how can you let it stop there? I told you why. But you don't love him. He knows that. So how can you hurt him? To you, everything is so simple. No, not everything, but this is. As long as you go on like this about him, the only person that you're betraying, Greta, is yourself, not him. And how long can it go on? It must end somewhere. With someone. With you? Dear God, I hope so. No more pretend. This is a take. Fire department, the screen is gonna bust into flames. <clears throat> I never saw so many kisses in one scene. How many kisses is that? Who's counting? And here 
is a picture that is the payoff when it comes to filming love scenes. Are you listening? Yes. There are three in Flesh and the Devil that'll make anyone fidget in their seat and their hair stand on end. Ah! <laughs> Never before has John Gilbert been so intense. John, John Gilbert. Well, anyway, uh, so intense in his portrayal of a man in love. Oh. Never before has a woman so alluring oh. with a seductive grace. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I can't. <laughs> Seductive grace that is far more potent than mere beauty <gasps> appeared on the screen. Greta Garbo is the epitome of pulchritude, the personification of passion. Frankly, never have we seen seduction so perfectly done. <laughs> 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 How much longer are you going to think about this? Time flies, Beauty. Don't rush me. The time is right now. Flesh and the devil has put you right in the position that you have to be to make it a man like this. They will never do it. No, they'll have to. And you tell them if they don't, you'll be on the first boat back to Sweden. No ticky, no shirty, all right? <laughs> they will laugh at me and buy me the ticket. In fact, it makes me laugh to think about it. Money is no laughing matter. It's the only thing in this business to take seriously. Believe me, the one thing they won't do is laugh. I'm scared. Well, then you should go home, look in your scrapbook, because you above everybody have nothing to be scared of. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. You're rare, and rarity should come high to get its price. You think I am that much? <sighs> me? No, no. I think you're more. Hmm. Uh, more. Maybe I'd do it. An increase? Yes. Well, I'll have to look it up. But if memory serves me right, money is not the subject for discussion until we renegotiate your contract, which is not, I think, until next year sometime. That's, uh, <clears throat> if we pick up your option. If? Well, there's no question about that, of course, Gwen. What are you pulling down now? What is she pulling down now? 600. No. No? A lousy 600. Ooh, 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 ooh. You hear that mouth? You know where that comes from, don't you? If I didn't know she was fooling around with Gilbert, I could tell from the mouth. To be perfectly honest with you, Greta, I have to agree with your choice of adjective. <laughs> I'm sure LB would, too, if he would just give it a minute's thought. You are more valuable to us than your present salary indicates. You've become one of the industry's most important stars in an incredibly short time. And uh, we are as aware of that as you are. Maybe even more so. No, I'm very aware of it. Okay. Okay, Irving, I'm a busy man. So let's make her an offer. So, uh... All right. Seven fifty a week. I'll have it in writing this afternoon. <sighs> well, Greta, what do you think would be fair? I want $5,000. You want what? A week. A week? F a week? <laughs> Excuse me while I bust out laughing myself to death. It is not a laughing matter. I quite agree with you. As a matter of fact, if you notice, I'm not amused at all. I think this amount would be fair. Fair? Fair? Fair to who? Fair? Fair? Do you... Look, do you realize who you're talking to? This is the fella that discovered you, Greta. Hey, listen, I risked. I, I gambled. Everybody said, Louie, hey, Louie, you gotta be out of your mind. But did I listen? No, I risked, I gambled. If it wasn't for L.B. Mayer, where would you be today? Maybe Paramount. Maybe United Artists. Maybe Universal. You hear that mouth? I liked her better when she couldn't talk English. Five thousand dollars. An agent would have to go all for five thousand I don't have an agent, and I don't need one. You're telling me. You pay Jack ten thousand. Gilbert is the biggest star on the lot, whether I like it or not. He is the biggest male star you got. Besides him, Garbo is the biggest. Everybody knows this, even me. Greta? Three thousand dollars. But Irving, are you sitting on your brains? We ought to, we ought to read her the riot act. Five. Or I don't do Anna Karenina. I go home to Sweden. 
Oh, Greta, come on, wait a minute. <laughs> now, you know that uh, you're much better off here with us. As a matter of fact, we just thought up a new title for that picture. Love. Love. That's all. Everybody can pronounce it. Also, it's catchy. Also, it works perfect as advertising. Greta Garbo and John Gilbert in love. Do you get it? You see, you even give me first billing. But whatever you call it, I don't do it unless. All you need is a gun. You'll be a perfect hold-up man. Well, Greta, you've left us with a very difficult decision here. I don't force you to say yes right away. I have no hurry. When you call me, I am ready to start the picture. If. Besides everything else, she's got a lot of moxie, that Swede. She could have asked for 10,000. Eight grand would have been my top offer. <laughs> you to be my wife. I love you. Really desperately, and I want you to be my wife. I don't want to be someone's wife, Jack. Most of all, I sure don't want to be someone's third wife. Oh! It was a little mistake. Now, don't hold them against me. I don't. But I don't help you make another one. This wouldn't be another one. This would be the best thing that I ever did. Huh? I don't think I will ever marry anyone. It's supposed to mean forever and always. Like I used to think with Stila. But that is not an always. Also, I don't ever want to be owned. Ooh, that's a hell of a way to look at it. Hmm. Maybe. Well, I am not going to stop asking. I know. Why does a hummingbird hum? I don't know. Why? Because he forgot the lyrics. <laughs> You are looking lovely. How are you, Moya? Very good, very good, fine. A mineral water for Miss Garbo, please. No, Moya. The usual, please. Uh, and what is this usual? A dry martini, no olive, served in a coffee cup until this absurd prohibition is ended. Mm. I don't mean for us to see each other so seldom, Moya. Ah, a few weeks. It's not, it's not long. It seems longer to me. Thank you. I must tell you something before you hear it from someone else. I am leaving MGM. Leaving? I have requested that I be released from the contract and be here in Tolberg and see no reason why not. I'm sorry, Moya. It's been so unhappy for you there. Is there nothing I could do? I'm sorry, forgive me. There is an arrangement for me. 
at Paramount. That's wonderful. I'm so pleased for you. Of course, it means that you and I will never make a film together again. Never is too long to be certain of. Ah. Two new habits, then. To old ones. I do miss you. Good. She makes it a terrible mistake in your life. It is fitting and right that you should have occasional regrets for what was before. You see how happy I am still you say this is not right for me? He's not the man for you. Please, Moya, we must quarrel. Tell me about Anna Karenina. Yes, we might do it. You and Gilbert. Gilbert as Vronsky. Of course. It will not be Tolstoy. Well, it's just as well. It will have another title. Why is that? They say no one could pronounce Anna Karenina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Gilbert has Vronsky. Not in 1,000 years could it be Vronsky. Well, shall we order? How long it'll be in New York, Miss Garble? Two more days. Why didn't Mr. Gilbert accompany you on this trip for the premiere of Love, Miss Garble? Mr. Gilbert had other commitments. How do you feel about the success of this latest movie, Greta? Oh, Miss Garble feels very good about hey, come it. Come on, will you? Can't she talk? Yeah. When are you going to marry John Gilbert, Miss Garble? Mr. Gilbert is a fine actor and a splendid man. We are friends. We are fellow artists. We are partners. But when you say partners, just what does that mean exactly, Greta? Oh, go away. Leave me alone. What'd she say? She said, I want to be alone. Oh, yeah? OK. <sighs> well, how many times would you say I've asked you? I wasn't counting. I was counting for a while there, then I stopped. Mm. How many times was it when you stopped? Well, let me see. There was three times when you were shooting Mysterious Lady. I asked you seven times while we were making a woman of affairs. I asked you two or three times during, uh, what was your next picture? Wild Orchids. How could you forget? That's a lot of pictures. You should slow down. Oh, I think I'm going too fast to slow down. Ask yourself. I mean, you don't take me seriously anymore, do you? I don't think so. Oh, when you ask serious, I take you serious. But when you don't, I don't. Most of the time I've asked you, Greta, I've been very serious. You know that. Oh, I know. Oh, Greta. Greta. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you too, my darling. But not enough. How much is enough? You know, you know how much. Sometimes enough is too much. Please, Greta. Please marry me. Please. I must be very drunk. Why? Why? Oh, because. No, you're not drunk. No, you're not drunk. You're just a little tipsy, maybe that's all, but you're not drunk. Oh, please, don't be drunk, because if you're drunk and you say yes, it won't count. No, you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, was I drunk last night? I don't remember saying yes, please. Oh, please, gotta say it. A little tipsy, maybe. But I'm not drunk. Say it. Say it, Greta. You actually said that? Yes. You're not just pulling my leg. Irving, marrying Greta is not something that I joke really about. That's well, in that case, congratulations, my yeah. friend. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a double way. Oh, who else are you marrying? <sighs> Irving, I am okay. serious now. <laughs> all right, who is couple number two in this marriage epidemic? King, Vidor, and Eleanor. Yes, oh. it's all arranged. It's an outdoor wedding at Marion Davies' house. Now, 
Let's make it a triple wedding with you and Norma. What do you say? Let's not get carried away, shall we? Oh, Irving, in all my life, I've never felt such passion and delight. Except for the ah, Irving, wasn't that a line in one of your pictures? <laughs> you said an outdoor wedding? Isn't that sort of risky? What if it rains? Irving, John Gilbert and Greta Garbo are getting married. It can't rain. <laughs> Ah, I know you're Norman Shearer, but who's your friend? <laughs> Irving! <laughs> you idiot, I'm so happy for you. Thank you, thank you. Well, what did I tell you? Well, I guess some people just have the magic. Uh, on the other hand, is it not raining on Vito's wedding, or is it not raining on your wedding? It's something to think about. How do you put up with this guy here? Some effort. Now, tell me, where is the blushing bride? It's very important that I talk to her before she actually goes through with this. Uh, she knows everything about me, I swear. My life is an open book. <laughs> Besides, I, 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 uh, I really don't think she's arrived yet, no? Play for her own wedding, eh? Well, you know Greta. She's a old-fashioned girl. She and her three bridesmaids are probably still looking for something borrowed and something blue. Or a uh, chauffeur got drunk again and didn't show up. But the chauffeur showed up and the car got drunk. Would you excuse me for a minute? I am now going to go circulate. Have fun. <laughs> you must stand down, please. Oh, right. oh, 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 ah, my friend, thank you. Oh, Jack, are you as nervous as I am? Me, no, I never get nervous, ladies. I <laughs> hope. <laughs> Six minutes after three. In order to be a success, a double wedding needs at least four reliable people. Three won't do. Perhaps there's been an accident. Hmm. King? Who's going to be the first to say it? I know, darling. I'm sorry. Oh, she's over an hour late, King. I want to get married today sometime. Everyone's getting very nervous, especially me. Where is Jack? He's inside with Irving. He's called everywhere. She is nowhere to be found. Is going to start charging overtime. So, the suspense is killing me. We'll be losing the light soon. You're telling me. <laughs> Eleanor, you look beautiful. Thanks, Elvie. But so much eye makeup, after all, it's just a wedding. Well, the least you can do is wait another 15 minutes, King. Jack, I'm sorry. Really, I am. But we have got to make a decision. Then make it. Make it. One wedding is better than no wedding. Oh, shut up. You're King's guest. You're not mine. So you just keep on it. Just rolls right off me. The man is thinking drunk, like always. Jack, we have to go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I get married, my blessings is getting married. <laughs> You're in no condition to get married anyhow. Who ever heard of a man with a skin full like you got on his wedding day? Take him with you. <laughs> What's the difference anyway? You got her in bed, didn't you? You need to make it official? Get him! <laughs> It's over. It's over. It's over. Over. Is that what he said, over? You think it's over? Pretty boy degenerate, you. I'll show you over. You're finished. You're finished in this industry.
sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Well, say anything. Think of something. We have telephones now. Maybe a messenger with hand-delivered regrets. Even a telegram. Plans canceled. Proceed without me. No? Why did you do that to me? I don't know. I couldn't go through with it. I couldn't bear to tell you. I could only run away. You said yes to me. You said yes to me. Uh, yeah, you, you said yes but to me. Please, Damn it, you said yes. Forgive me for humiliating you. Stiller. Right, Stiller had something to do with this, right? Tell me it was Stiller, please. Nothing. It was only me, Jack. is, what are we going to do about it? You talk as though we have a choice. We don't have any choice. Every studio in town is in the same spot we're in. Now, either Except we... Warner's. Naturally. And not a word to anyone from any of the brothers. They just go ahead and spring it on us. No, they didn't, L.B. Everybody knew they were fooling around with talking pictures. But we just weren't listening. Uh, no pun intended. From now on, movies are going to talk. We talk or we die. It's as simple as that. I think it's just a fad. It'll pass. The jazz singer is breaking records in New York. We should have such a fad. Gentlemen, I think we should go to New York and start scouting for stage actors right away. <laughs> if I thought actors were going to have to talk, I would have stayed in the junk business. You won't change your mind? No. My mind was too long making up. Better I should have done so long before. It is not right, Moye, for you to... Fail. No. The failure is theirs, but they have never seen your genius. Yeah, but they have seen yours. I have that to carry with me in my heart. It is better that I go to Europe. When I finish this next picture, I will visit you there. A long visit. I must go. The train is early in the morning. I will be there. <laughs> no. Remember Berlin and Mayer. You said he did not want you, and I said he would. And they will always want you. Always. Darling, let me remind you about something. The last time you were this upset about a picture, if you remember, it was the torrent. <laughs> remember what that did for you? Ah, you must listen to Irving, my sweetheart. Uncle Irving will not steer you wrong. That unhappiness had nothing to do with the part. It's the part I object to this time. What's the matter with the part? Anna Christie? You couldn't ask for a better part for your first talking picture. 
Pulitzer Prize play by one of our greatest playwrights. I mean, you can't beat that, Greta. He's a hell of a good drinker, too, that only. Did I ever tell you about the time that I spent with him in New York in 24? Ah, uh, that would have been an unforgettable night. If only I could remember it. <laughs> no, but seriously, Greta, there's also the question of the accent. Anna Christie has a Swedish accent. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. He told him. I mean, the part is tailor-made for you. It's perfect. Loving, how many times must I say it? This is exactly the problem. This play shows Swedish people as lowlifes and drunks and degenerates. Well? Present company accepted, of course. They only happen to be Swedes, Greta. I do not think O'Neill intended any offense to us personally. Traitor. Oh, darling, why don't you tell him the truth? You're just nervous as hell about making your first talking picture. Well, you've got nothing to be nervous about. Look at me. Huh? I'm about to make my first talking picture. Am I nervous? Am I'm I? not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that, Irving? His Glorious yep. Nights. His Glorious Nights. That's a good title. I, I like that. It's glorious. Yes. Yeah. I've certainly had my fair share of those. Hmm? Glorious Nights. Oh, his glorious nights, his shining days. Psa! I want to do St. Joan. Well, that you're going to have to forget about, <laughs> at least for now. Shaw absolutely refuses to give us the rights. I think that Irving is secretly saving that part, but not. Oh, 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 no, my Jack, how would you like a nice, cool dip Stop in the pool? <laughs> oh, no. You'll all talk about me behind my back. Maybe if we all try very hard, someone will think of something pleasant to say. Won't be you. Well, it's sweetheart. You are absolutely right. <clears throat> now, kids, come on. I know, it's dirty laundry in public. You'd think we were married. I know. That is at least one mistake I did not make. All right. Right. She wants to be alone. Jack, you're huh? being very unattractive. How dare I be unattractive? Well, I do not deserve to live unattractively. I think I'm gonna go kill myself. Will you excuse me? It's a perfect story for photo play. A lovely afternoon with Jack and Greta by one who's there. I don't know how much more of this I can be, Victor. All the time he promises me to change, not to drink so much, not to be so wild, but nothing changes. There is no fun with us anymore. He tells me I don't really care about fun. All I want is to work, but that is not true. Not altogether, perhaps. So then you make Anna Christie, it will be four films you do in only a single year, Greta. That is a great deal of work. To be an actress is the greatest part of my life. I do not think Jack is the kind of man to be comfortable with that. Then he cannot have that comfort, because that I cannot change. But most of all, he doesn't forgive me. For what? The wedding day. The wedding that never was, he says. Never forgets the embarrassment. His friends, the newspapers. And it has never been the same. He never forgives me. And I don't like that he doesn't forgive. Very much I don't like it. So, I don't know how much more of it I can be. I think I am like standing on the street corner with a red light, waiting for the light to be green. Glorious night, scene 93, take one. Action. My dearest, I thought you'd never come. I've been here two hours, waiting, waiting. But I must be careful, otherwise our secret would not be a secret. But I don't wish it a secret. I love you, Princess. I've told you that a hundred times. I love you. Please, please don't say that again. 
I have no wish to hear it. What can a man do when he is as much in love as I am? Why can't you be as nervous about this as I was about Anna Christie? One good turn deserves another, I think. There was nothing for you to be nervous about with Anna Christie. Easy to say that in hindsight. Now that it's a smash hit buffo box office. Besides, Garbo can do no wrong. Everything she touches turns to gold. Garbo talks. Nevertheless, I was nervous at your sneak preview, just the same. Common courtesy, I calls it. Look at you. You're so calm, it's scary. This is my talky debut. Do you understand that? That is nothing for you to worry about now either, Jack. Couldn't you pretend a little bit? Try to make me feel better. Otherwise, our secret would not be a secret. I don't wish it to be secret. I love you, princess. I've told you that a hundred times. I love you. That's a scream. No, please. Please don't say it again. What can a man do when he has as much in love as I am? You can try to remember what I try to remember. I am betrothed to another. Damn him! You can't marry him. You want me? How want me? How want you? I want you more than any man has ever wanted a woman before. I want you before God, men, and law. Oh yes. Oh yes, a thousand Jack, wait. times. Yes. Greta. Who am I? He's quickly running. Man. Yeah. Why not? I used to love him. I'm a man. A man bold enough to win you. Jack. Jack. That did is something wrong. Did you know I was wrong. a comedian? Oh, no, you didn't know that, did you? No, nobody knew that. I was just waiting for the right time to spring it on an unsuspecting world. Out of the way, Keaton. Out of the way, Chaplin. Here comes Gilbert, the newest last right text. Stop. Please. Oh, yes, Greta Garbo speaks in the world's wounds. John Gilbert opens his mouth, and, and, the, and the house comes down, and his debut performance is an all-talking act. You should have been there. It was a sensation to all your friends. Jack, listen to me. It wasn't you they were laughing at. There is something wrong. Oh, I'll say there was something wrong. It's wrong. It's Jack Gilbert with a mouth that talks. Jack. Please stop saying these crazy things, please. Why are you still standing here? You're missing all the fun. If you hurry now, you can catch the last ten minutes. Oh, yes, the fade-out. It's a scream. Garbo talks. Gilbert. Flops. Yes? Mr. Mannix. Oh, send him right in, Doris. Have you seen this? Audiences laugh at Gilbert. I saw it. Has he been found yet? I thought you knew. Last night, someplace in Nevada. Uh, I'm afraid to ask. How is he? After two weeks on the run, you can imagine. He's in terrible shape, Eddie. I had him sent into the hospital to dry out. <laughs> Boy, he looks bad. Looks like somebody changed their mind and dug him up. Drying him out won't solve his problem, unless we find out what went wrong. That's like asking seven kids who threw the rock that killed the little old lady. LB says it's the sound department's fault. The sound department says no, that's just the way Gilbert records. He's got a trick voice. Trick voice? He never had a trick voice in the rushes. He never had a trick voice in the rough cut. The picture goes public, suddenly he's got a trick voice. There's no getting around it, is there, Irving? Somebody in the sound department doctored that picture, and somebody else made it worth his while to do it. The question is, who greased the palm? The answer is, don't ask. The milk is already spilt. We've got to stop crying about it. 
No, the thing now is to get Jack into another picture as soon as possible. And this time, Eddie, we make sure there is no monkey business. Do you understand what I mean? Right. Some glorious night. picture. Well, Irving keeps his promises. He's a good friend to you. Yes, he also has a hell of an investment, isn't he? You'd hate to see that go down the drain, wouldn't he? That is an unkind thing to say. <laughs> you know, the truth is that MGM needs me as about as much as it needs another blonde starlet with a cute behind. You knock on any ten doors in this town, and another Jack Gilbert will answer five of them with a <coughs> perfect smile, a glint in his eye. <laughs> what are you doing? Hmm? You mustn't do that, Jack. Well, my beautiful sweet. If I get any more dried out than I am, I am going to disintegrate into a little pile of dust and be blown away by the first small breeze that comes along. If you start to drink, Jack, I leave. I don't come back. Never. Our revels now are ended. Hmm. Now is the winter of our discontent. <laughs> to be or not to be. Is that the question? I wonder what kind of Shakespearean actor I would have made. No, not altogether bad, I don't think. Of course, I would have died unknown, unsung, a pauper banging on the gates of Vespian heaven. But at least I would have spent my life speaking words that were worth speaking. Don't, Jack. I told you are all spirits and have melted into air into thin air Introducing the most exciting new actor you've had at your studio for years. Thank you, Miss Cruz. Oh, we 
if I were only 20 years younger. Or 10 would do. <laughs> Not to mention, we also got you. Laura Hope Cruz, my all-time favorite character actress. Well, in that case, LB, I think you ought to renegotiate my contract. You're gonna be in the Academy Award picture of 1936. What more do you want? He's a devil. <laughs> Good morning, Rose. Oh, my dear, you look divine. Just a little something I threw together last night. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Taylor. I am a great, great admirer of you, Miss Garbo. I, I'm very honored to be here, in a picture with you, I mean. We make it a good one, yes? Better than all those other films of this beautiful story. And so sad. All the other Camilles will pale by comparison. She's supposed to be pale. She's a sick girl, that Camille Dane. <laughs> Shooting on a new picture is always my very favorite day. Everyone is so exhilarated. Aha, uh -huh. now we can get started. Mr. Producer has finally showed up. Good morning. Good morning. How's everything going? Here, everything is good. Nobody could tell it by you. Is something the matter, Irving? I've just had some rotten news. Tell it tomorrow. This is the first day of shooting. You'll hear it anyway. Jack Gilbert died this morning. His heart. I saw him briefly not too long ago. He looked awful. Oh, to remember what a wildly attractive man he once was. Well, I don't see him for a few years now. Would you like me to ask Cucor to shoot around you for today? No. No. Thirty-eight years old. Isn't that appalling? He said to me one time that he would hate when he got old and not be able to do anymore all the things he loved to do. That's just the sort of thing he would say. Not me, darling. Better to get old. Remembering is better than nothing. So, Camille, shall we start? I almost married him once, you know. Okay, we're almost ready, guys. All right, we're gonna have a now. Come on. Oh, all right, she's ready. Let's go, you guys. All right. Set. Okay, set. Set. Could you check this just a second? All right, just a second, though, will you? Just a second. I need two more lights over here, right away. All right, the star's ready. Let's go. Okay. Come on. Okay. Uh, Everybody set? Yep. Let's make a picture. Stay tuned, next on True Entertainment, without evidence. <laughs> <laughs>